Hey everybody, Brian Mann here, Hands-On Auto Training. This video is on a 2008 Dodge Avenger that was set in a P0755. That's the 2-4 solenoid code. In this video, we're going to go over a few things, but first, I got to tell you, always be safe when you're working on vehicles. Um, some of the stuff that I do is only for professionals. This video is for entertainment purposes only, okay? Don't go switching some of the wires like I do. I'm kind of following something I've seen on Identifix and also uh, some other procedures that I just wanted to verify what's going on. So we're going to go ahead and play my um, take on what I did. I'm just going to show you what I did, but I'm going to interrupt it as we go and uh, discuss a few things. We've got ourselves this 2008 Avenger, and we're setting a code in the transmission that comes back just with a key on. We got a P0755, that's a 24 solenoid code. So, uh, taking a look at a diagram here is how I go about these jobs. I know that this solenoid should be hot all the time, it has power coming in, and it feeds all the solenoids, and the computer grounds these. I know for a fact from previous experience that the computer will like tap this to ground really quick, and we're going to have that. So. I want to go ahead and show you, get in here at the connector, kind of uh, challenging to do, but this is our yellow and uh, dark blue right there. That is the wire we're going to be going after. And we can compare uh, some of the companions. I think it's uh, not this brown one, but this green one right here. We'll, we'll compare that as a known good signal as well. So I'll get it set up. I'll show you what's up. Now I'll be the first one to tell you I did not look at this flow chart, but if you don't understand how a system works, it's always great to look at a flow chart and see the description and operation. And even in this flow chart, as I'm going to show you here, I, as I was looking at it, I missed a really important fact. So this is using all data, and the nice thing here is this does give us a diagram so we can see just like we saw before that we do have our power coming in all the time. Let me zoom that up. So we got power coming in, feeding this uh, transmission solenoid pack. And then we have that 2-4 solenoid. This is the solenoid that's setting the code right here. So we got that one. And that is the yellow and dark blue. But let's X out of this. And I'll show you what I missed. And I really wish that I didn't miss this. Is they have the theory of operation, which is great. And it's saying that it's... Uh, the solenoids are turned off and inductive spikes should be detected. Now this says every 10 seconds, okay? But I was showing every 20 seconds is what I was witnessing on my scanner. I've also tested a few other uh, Chrysler products, actually a handful, maybe more, and I've seen it's always 20 seconds uh, for the most part. Now what I missed in this flowchart was this three consecutive test failures, okay? So you'll see that in a little bit coming up. All right, we got that back probe in here. Our blue wire is our um, our blue lead channel A is that 2-4 uh, solenoid. I want you to see something here. See these little spikes? Let me go ahead and stop this and we'll zoom in. Let's just take a quick zoom in. First of all, we'll take a look at the pattern here. You can see that's an inductive kick. It looks like a fuel injector. So this is getting commanded on for a very brief amount of time. How much? How, let's see how long. Getting commanded on there for, oh, what, about um, maybe 7 milliseconds? Right about 7 milliseconds. But check this out. Let me clear that ruler out. I want you to see this is a repetitive pattern. This is the signal that the computer is testing the circuit for. And it's every 20 seconds. Exactly 20 seconds. Okay, our blue is on our 2-4 solenoid. It's setting a code. Our red is on the LR solenoid, just as a reference, so we can see what's going on there. I'm going to go ahead and hit the stop button on the scope. I do have this set up for 5 seconds of division, which is a lot of time. But you're going to see why in just a second. So we hit stop. We'll hit play. Go ahead and turn this key on. Alright, so as I turn the key on, you can see that both of these voltages went up to the 12 volts. Let me just measure that for you and show you what we're at there, 13.2. So we're at our battery voltage right there, which is awesome. And you're going to see every 20 seconds, this will pulse this solenoid. It'll pulse both of them, okay? So if I measure from here, so here, you see that's 20 seconds. Every 20 seconds, this computer is going to go ahead and check the system, and that's how it checks. Now, what we're looking for is an inductive kick. We want to check the inductive kick on, uh, let's say, our good solenoid, which is the red, versus our bad. Okay. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. Let me put this red up high, get it out of the way, and you can see here. Let's just get in here tight. It looks like an injector pattern, doesn't it? No pintle bump, because this wasn't enough time for that uh, solenoid to move, I don't think. That's pretty normal. So let's take a look at our voltage. 
you can see this thing peaked out right about 45 volts let's go ahead and take a look at our, our red signal here let's scroll up this is the good one let's see what this voltage is about 45 46 volts as well so I don't see a problem here in this vehicle now I'm showing that the circuit integrity of the of the computer uh, or should I say the circuit integrity of from down at this uh, transmission valve body all the way or valve block solenoid block the computer looks good so I think I might do something I don't like to do I may be cutting these two circuits I'll cut them and switch them and see if the code follows and if it does then we know it's on this side if it doesn't then it's gonna be a computer okay ladies and gentlemen this is the point that I'm talking about don't go switching these wires and try and take a test drive I just have the key in the on position or the run position I'm not driving a vehicle I'm just looking for the signal output and I'm looking to see if the code follows the uh, solenoid so if I switch this and now the code sets for the LR solenoid I know it's a transmission problem that side of it vehicle harness side um, if it stays at a 2-4 uh, solenoid I know it's something inside the computer all right everybody this is not my ideal way of doing it but this is what we call the old switcheroo basically cut the uh, two wires for the two circuits uh, I think I'm switching to LR with a 2-4 and we're going to see if we uh, go ahead and turn the key on here, we got our key on, and I'm, I must have a connection problem with my blue lead. So I'm going to try that again. Interesting. Oh, I don't think it, I think it fell out. Dang. As long as I'm not touching the other one. Right. There we go. All right. So I want you to see here that we still have both solenoids be, being commanded on. Let's just zoom in here real quick. Get real tight in there you can see we've got that now I want to go back to the scan tool oh not this it's a problem with the white tech scan tool man I tell you I wish they just left it PC based not cloud based I think it looks like I'm gonna have to log back in all right so that was like a few minute detour unfortunately there so we're gonna go ahead and hit the continue button here to clear all the DTCs and we're gonna see what comes back because this thing would set codes would turn yellow so let's give it that 20 seconds we can actually watch the scope and see what's going on too oh, hit the play button so we're waiting to see this pulse and when this pulse happens is when we know for a fact the PCM just checked uh, the solenoids. So let's go see. Hmm. Nothing setting. You gotta be kidding me. Well, I'm gonna go cycle a key. Maybe that's what has to happen. Hey guys, this is where I wish I would have paid attention or read that flowchart and that description and operation. Because if you read it, it says it has to uh, have three consecutive faults to set the code. So that means three times it has to not see a spike. Well, three times at the 20 seconds per pulse. It says 10 seconds per uh, pulse, but it, we're seeing uh, 20 seconds. That's, that's one minute. I didn't leave this thing sit for one minute. Turn it on, turn it off. Nothing popping yet. Um, that's interesting because before this would set right away. There's a when I turn the key on and off, and then it does a test right away when it turns on. Here, check that out. I'll go back and look at that again. So these both swoop down, and then it tests both solenoids. Oh, there we go. Now we pop the light. Let's see what we got here. All DTCs, and we're still setting the same code with everything switched. So we need to get ourselves a power chain control module here. All right, to keep everybody happy out there, I know I got a lot of hate mail. I did uh, heat shrink these things. I uh, do the bare crimp seal connector and I would get the glue to come out. I'm hoping it comes out on this GoPro camera. I'm not liking this camera too much, but I got the glue coming out on both ends. So we repaired what we did. And just so you know, I did put the yellow to the yellow and the green to the green. Very important. 
You saw me using my Pico scope here. That is my favorite scope to use of all time. Now, if you have a U scope, a snap on scope, an ATS E scope, all great products, any scope will work to be able to show you this information. Uh, guys, so you know, we're giving away those U scopes October 2021. We're going to start giving away two scopes a month to members of the membership site. So if you sign up for the membership site, core or premium, we'll give those away. But uh, this shop is going to be getting a computer for it. I think they're going to get a pre program computer. It's going to come with the right calibration the VIN number and it'll be in basically a learn mode so it'll toss it in turn the key and it's gonna go um, but if I do get back to program and I'll be sure to take a clip of that I'll show you guys it's not setting a code to verify or repair I, I appreciate everybody taking the time to watch this if you have any questions comments or concerns let me know I want to hear what you think about the diagnostic process I took um, please let me know I'd love to hear it. you guys have a great day bye bye